High above the world, in the valley of the Nepal, in the ancient capital of Kathmandu, in Lagan Silicana, an ancient palace, up its narrow staircases and in its dark basements, there existed a treasure. It was a treasure built up over time in a slow accumulation of pieces. It was a forgotten treasure, covered in grime and dust, as its owners and keepers no longer had a use for it. These were the practical men of the Royal Nepalese Army, charged with protecting their king and country. Would this treasure be found, or would it slowly continue to decay? Taking off for Mount Everest this morning on Buddha Air. In 2003, a man found himself flying above the roof of the world. Thrilled at the fantastic sights before and below him, he was even more excited about his destination. This particular flight was one of the culminating steps in a journey that had taken more than 25 years. Christian Cranmer is an antique weapons collector and dealer of long standing. Through all the years of his dealing, first on weekends and then as a full-time enterprise, Cranmer maintained a passionate interest in a trove of weapons he'd first heard about when he was just out of school. The story was that a traveler in a faraway land, in a mysterious city, was let into an ancient house and found it filled with weapons, the collection of centuries. Useless to the army that had used them, they were a unique collection, perhaps the last such collection in the world. Antiques, they were red meat to someone like Cranmer. For him, they became a quest. With Mark Dott and his colleague, Cranmer ran IMA. But Kathmandu was never far from his thoughts. How did this lifelong fascination begin? There is evidence that suggests his curiosity about weapons and their history came with his birth. Like most English families, I was sent to boarding school at the age of eight, which was a terrible experience. Every six to eight weeks there would be a film night and Hollywood's films of the 30s stirred a basic interest in history and weapons. As a genuine interest in history developed, especially the English Civil War, there was support from his father. My father bought this sword with me in an antique shop in the West Country, right where all this took place, and it was dug up at a place called Luton Tracy. I've still, still got it cost the princely sum of 10 shillings. It wasn't until many years later I found out that it was a sword that wasn't even made until 18, um, 1795. <laughs> but I've still kept it because to me that was part of the original cross. Later films also helped to maintain his passion. <laughs> Even though this officer's pistol is from a date later than the Battle of Rourke's Drift, the film got the stirring power of empire just right.
It's a miracle. If it's a miracle, color sergeant, it's a short chamber boxer Henry 0.45 caliber miracle. And a bayonet, sir, with some guts behind it. <laughs> 